Okay, everyone, welcome to uh, Truth Movement Australia's first live interview. My name's Adam Davis, and it's absolutely fantastic to have you all here. And um, today I've got someone very, very special that I'm going to be interviewing. And um, I've only actually started to find out about this information myself really in the last uh, maybe two months. When I first started to hear about it, it really, um, I've got to say, it didn't come to it as a shock to me. It was a lot more down the rabbit hole that I didn't know of. And as I, as I continue this journey of seeking the truth, I'm sure more and more of this kind of information is going to come out. What I want to talk to you about today and the person I'm going to be interviewing is, is a, a very, very special subject. And it's something that all Australians, in fact, most of the world should know about. It's the straw man illusion. I'm going to be introducing someone very, very soon who um, has been studying this for a very, very long time and um, is on the forefront of this kind of information. Uh, when it comes to your straw man and your free man. I'm not going to go into it now. I'm going to let this person explain it. Uh, and his name is Thomas Anderson. Thomas, it's absolutely fantastic to have you on the call. Thanks very much, Adam, and thanks for having us uh, along tonight. And um, welcome to everyone who's uh, joined the call tonight. So how did you get first get involved with this? Sure, believe it or not, I, uh, I've been researching a lot of things, a lot of topics now for probably the last 20 years, and I've always been suspicious of, of governments in any form. But um, I really joined the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the straw man movement, um, if you could call it a movement, uh, the, the awareness of it, if you like, probably about six years ago. Mm. And uh, I was actually introduced, I was given a book of uh, Mary Crofts at the time, and it really opened my, my eyes to this um, much bigger world. And when I, when I finished reading her book, I wasn't the same person again. So it, uh, it was a little bit like in the Matrix, a little bit like taking that red pill, and I couldn't go back, you know. This Mary Croft, can you explain what, she, what she's all about, and, and what is her book called? Uh, her book, if I can remember this correctly, is uh, called How I Clobbered Every Cash Confiscatory Agency Known to Man. Okay, let me so and, and, uh, that one more time so that everyone can remember. We will, we will put this up on the forum as well so that you can receive this book as well. Okay, sure. Uh, you can get it on the net, you can download it, and I've forgotten what her website is, but if you look up Mary Elizabeth Croft, or just Mary Croft, and uh, her book is called How I Clobbered Every Cash Confiscatory Agency Known to Man. Fantastic. All right. Well, well that's recorded, so I'll make sure that I search for that, and I add it. In fact, I think I actually do have that. Um, however, I'll, I'll, I don't think I've added it yet, so I'll make sure that I do. Okay, sure. I, so, I have a copy of it here anyway. I can send you a copy of it. Fantastic. So if you were to explain, uh, you know, what the straw man is and what this principle really is, how would you go about that? All right. Well, for those people who uh, either have or haven't had any introduction to it, the easiest way to explain what the straw man is, is to say that uh, all of us are born and given a name. What usually happens in, in birth, when, when your parents go and register you and you get a birth certificate, is a whole other entity is created at that moment in time. And so all of a sudden there might be uh, Adam Davis, you know, the, the living, breathing being, but then at the same time they create a legal fiction, uh, which is not, not really sort of any different to uh, a trademarked uh, icon such as Coca-Cola or uh, McDonald's or anything like that. And so there's, there's Adam Davis in all capital letters, and that's, that's your straw man. And now I'm... Um, it's been said that the, the living can't talk to the dead. And so the, the way that we do, the way that we actually do business or to, you know, do anything in this sort of um, made up society, um, because all of, all of the companies and corporations and governments are essentially fictional in the sense that they're just uh, paper corporations. Um, they're, not, they're not physically capable of doing anything. They're referred to as being dead. They don't actually have any energy of their own. And so the only way that we can interface with them is through a, a transmitting utility, which is this straw man. But the trouble uh, occurs because we've been, we've been fraudulently um, dis, you know, deceived into believing that the straw man is us. And so yes, yes. without, without realising, we've actually gone ahead and you know, made applications to the government and made... Uh, uh, you know, we've, we've gone out and got licenses and, and all sorts of contractual obligations that are actually in the straw man's name. Remember, it's not your name. Uh, it's just something that you happen to, to own. Uh, you're, actually, you're actually the principal in, in the whole situation, in the, in, the, uh, in the sense of the commerce of it. 
you're, you're the principal and the creditor, and you can think of the straw man as being the debtor. Okay, so, so I'm you're, taking you're responsibility a, for it. Yeah, you're actually uh, becoming aware of it and taking responsibility, I guess, for its um, its journey through this lifetime because it, it is just a legal fiction. So why do you think the government has set it up this way? Well, in your opinion, there, is, there isn't any money for a start. Um, and I say that, and a lot of people would sort of argue with me, well, of course there's money, I've got some in my pocket. But, <laughs> the, you know, America for a start is going to be in a very, very bad situation very soon when they suddenly say to everyone, well, the American dollar has no more value. And so everyone's going, to be, everyone's going to be stuck with all of these pieces of paper in their pocket, which aren't backed by anything of value. Okay, they're not backed by gold or silver or anything that's actually real. They're just a piece of paper. And, um, or they're going to have all of these ones and zeros, all of these computer entries somewhere on a computer somewhere. And again, not backed by anything and have absolutely no value whatsoever. So they're going to realize when the International Monetary Fund crashes the U.S. dollar probably within the next six months, um, there's going to be a lot, a lot of uh, panic because people are going to have no money at all. And that, they're going to replace, that. And they're going to well, replace that with the, uh, with the Amero. Yeah. You know? So yeah. getting back yeah. to your question, uh, just getting back to your question, about Adam, about the, um, why they do that, yeah. they, they, don't, they don't have any value. Uh, they don't have any money. So what they have to use is us as the collateral. That's why we're referred to as... Uh, as the collateral, or you know, if you see a movie like Collateral Damage, it's actually referring to us as the self-loading baggage. You know, the ones that get onto the commercial airlines and you know have this interaction with other countries. We're actually the value that the country holds. It's really interesting that you know what we're talking about here, because a lot of people um, you know get mad at the government or upset you know with what's happening with the new world order and all these things that get. Um, thrown around, and it's very interesting. The more I look at it, and people ask me, you know, why do you think the government do this? You know, they're so evil, etc. The more I look into it, the more I realise that it really is about ourselves and about the fact that we haven't taken responsibility for our own lives, and we haven't researched into the things that we've we've signed up for, and um, and that's the reason why they feel that it's completely. Um, legitimate what they do to us and, and, sure. and what is going to happen to us because they see as well you've been, you haven't taken responsibility for your life so you are our collateral damage. That's right. Uh, we Well, I don't, but uh, I would say probably 99% of the, uh, the persons in Australia uh, are owned and controlled by the government along with all of your assets and for those of you who happen to have children, your children as well. I mean, how many people out there do you know uh, or maybe even on this call are on the dole? I mean, if you're on the dole, you're essentially saying that you can't take, you can't look after yourself, uh, you can't look after your own affairs, and so you're accepting um, the status of being a, a ward of the state or a child of the state, and so yes. therefore you're you're just basically seen as um, as their property. And so if you've got any complaints about that, uh, you know they're not going to be listening to that at all because you're you're just basically seen as cattle to them. Well, I mean. It, I, I totally, completely agree. And, and what I want to talk about is, is this birth certificate thing. Because I've heard about it many times before, and I really want to understand completely what it's about. So the, the birth certificate, I believe, ha plays a, a big role in this. Can you explain to me how this works? Sure, sure. Um, well, you can imagine that getting back to the natural world, uh, forgetting about commerce for a second. So every, every living being that is born on this planet has what's called inalienable rights, which means that's your, your common law rights or your yes. natural rights, and everyone has those. And basically what that means is that you have the right to travel, uh, you have the right to land, liberty, and freedom. You have all of these things which cannot be taken away by any other being on this planet. They yes. cannot be governed, and uh, they are not to be sort of um, uh, changed by, by anyone either. Um, the only way that this situation has changed and does change is by our uh, ignorance. We were actually born into ignorance of the fact that we have those inalienable rights. We don't know how to exercise them. And there's just a general assumption that, um, that we're all born into this state, which is this, um, this fictitious kind of corporation. 
mean, it's, it sounds like something from, you 